Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Guys, it's that time of the year when there's new technology that's out there and because there's always new technology that's popping up, I'm gonna keep doing videos even though I've done videos on this stuff in the past. And that means multimeters. So guys, I, I'm not gonna do like the most expensive multimeters out in the world. I, I mean, I've got some pretty expensive ones here, but what's more important are the multimeters that are economical, but yet very valuable. They, they have a lot of features, they're accurate, they're responsive. I mean, this, this is all the stuff that we want in a multimeter and there's many different size and form factors and there's, there's all, a wide variety of quality. So guys, uh, it's been a very successful series of videos on multimeters and today I've got some new stuff here. So what I have here in this box is a couple new multimeters that are brand new uh, for 2023 as far as I can tell. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it because uh, man, I, I'm really excited. I've been waiting for these guys for a minute. And uh, when I seen some of the new tech that's out there, uh, I instantly had the habit, had to have it. So one of them, uh, the Unity right here, we'll go over that in another video. Today, this is gonna be a full-fledged video on this guy right here. This is a digital oscilloscope slash multimeter scope meter, but it's got some interesting features and some stuff that I've always wanted and I've just never been able to obtain or the interface has been so messy, it just hasn't been worth it. So this guy right here, this is kind of the happy medium between all the meters that I've had historically. So first, traditional multimeter size. It's the Klein. This is the MM700. Excellent meter. Love this guy. It's been working like a treat, but it's just a multimeter. It's all it can do. And when you're testing motors and maybe some other things, I really wish that I could test some things and see what, what waveforms on the other side. Maybe it's not exactly DC. Maybe it's not a clean AC waveform. This guy, it's good. It gets me through 95% of the jobs, but I just can't always cut it. In comes the affordable scope meter. This is the Allison uh, EM 1230. It's, it's an excellent meter. The interface is a little clunky. Um, it's got a pretty good response rate. I believe this one is 10 to 20 megahertz is its range. Don't quote me on that, but it's pretty close. Um, the downsides, like I said, are the interface is clunky and the terminals up here are plastic, which they say is a benefit because it's isolated, but even metallic ones are technically isolated. It's a battery powered meter. But anyway, um, I, I think that that is a marketing ploy. But this guy here, because the interface is clunky, I choose not to use it. I would love to carry this guy every single day, everywhere I go. But I just can't because I really get aggravated when I'm using it. In comes this guy. I see it sitting there and it looks very similar to the Allison, but is not. According to what I've seen, it's very different in the interface, and that is where I really count. All right, so uh, just from the box, it's um, this one's sold by X East. Uh, it's a Shenzhen company. So if you guys haven't been keeping up with tech, every couple months, the guys over in China, they come up with some new cool products that solve problems that the old products didn't exactly <laughs> solve. So that's where we have this guy. Now, just judging by the case, this is right in the, the size factor that I want. Look at that. It's about an uh, inch and a half, maybe two inches at the thickest. That's the form factor that I'm really looking for. So this guy can do a little bit of everything. Uh, USB-C charging. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Now, the crazy thing is, is this scope meter doesn't really have a model that I can see. Everything just says digital oscilloscope. That's it, but it's got USB-C charging, which let's see. Yeah, some of these other guys didn't even have that. It's got um, either a proprietary uh, DC, like this guy here is DC jack is really far in there. You see that? You can only use their charging cord to get this guy to charge, or it's got this USB uh, micro right here. Old type of cable. I, I don't even know if I have any of those cables floating around. Hopefully I do, but Again, it's old tech, and when they made it, it was based on old tech. 
here we have this guy. Look at this. Look at it. It fits in the palm of my hand. How cool is that? Uh, it says right off the bat, it says stop testing voltage in current mode. <laughs> uh, apparently, they've had a problem with people testing voltage in amps mode. Um, that would not be good. Uh, let's go ahead and peel this sticker off the front so we can get a clean look at the LCD. Uh, let's see. On the outside of this meter, I've got a little access panel here where I have a square wave calibration for the um, oscilloscope probe. It's got a ground point and the USB-C charging. Yes. Yes. See, already I like this meter. I, I'm, I'm liking it. Look at this. We have a metal. We have a metal uh, BNC for it's only a single channel, but I only need a single channel oscilloscope. So it's got a metal connector, which solves the plastic connector problem of that one. Although I've never had one break. I've never heard of anybody having one break. It still is annoying. Um, it's got, eh, could be better, the, the little stand. But does it stand? Yes, it does. That's all I need. All right. I'm not going to complain. Uh, on the front here, it's actually got the first indicator of a model. It's the XE702S. So finally, I have a model. That's interesting. It looks like it just opens up with four Phillips screws, and that is going to be important because those uh, those screws are going to have to be opened to check the... Well, we're going to open it. We're going to open it anyway. Um, after I, I show you guys its functionality, something that I'm, I don't even know how this thing functions completely, but we'll, we'll open it up at the very end, and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside, and that will give us our final determination over if this guy's worth it or not. I've got... Four function keys, I've got a power key, I've got an auto range, a hold, and a mode. And the mode switches between oscilloscope mode and meter mode. Now some, if not most of the other meters, you have to go into a sub menu and click on something else to switch it over between modes. I want to switch between modes quickly. A dedicated button on the front panel is exactly what I've been looking for. Why is it taking so long for, for meter companies to figure that out. And right here, I've got four directional keys and a menu. So hopefully it's easy to trigger stuff. It says that this is a, a 990 or 9,999 count meter. And this is true RMS. So it's a true RMS meter. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Okay, boot up. Whoa, boot up time is really fast. This camera might drive me crazy here. Uh, let's go ahead and shut it down again. Let's power it back up. So you have to press and hold like for three seconds. Boot up time is really quick. I dig that. My multimeters have to boot quick. It drives me crazy when they slow to boot. And it does boot in oscilloscope mode. So we can switch it over. It's got a beautiful interface. You see that? So it goes right into millivolts and it's got an analog scale at the top, which because some, some people prefer analog when you're looking for variations and changes. So you can see I've got my menu key for the different types of voltages, uh, continuity, ohms, diode mode, capacitance. Next one is for current and the next one over here looks like it's for millivolts and temperature. This guy does temperature. So that goes and might as well bring us into the next section. You guys, guys, I love it when multimeters have a built-in temperature section and it just completely makes sense, guys. I wish more companies did this. So um, not a big fan of this style of banana plugs, but it'll get the job done for sure. There's not much of a strain relief right here, but uh, it seems like the, the cables are reasonably durable. It's got a standard long probe, so it's not a typical thermocouple. You've got elongated probe, which could be nice. That could be really nice. Just the regular thermocouple can be kind of annoying. It's all coiled up and you got to uncoil it. And a lot of technicians don't take care of their, their temperature probe. They are color coded. So you got your black and your red. Temperature goes into the red, black, red. And let's see how it goes. Temperature, AC, there we go. Look at that. So it's on temperature mode. Hopefully the camera can pick it up all right because I know my lights are a little crazy. So by multi-pressing the button at the top, it goes through all the different functions. Some other meters, 
that shall go unnamed, you have to press a button that takes you into a sub menu and then you have to navigate using these buttons here. Now, this is exactly how I like it. Just multi-pressing this button right here takes me into the different functions. So degree centigrade and let's see, it says here in the subset, I've got temperature and Fahrenheit and up here is my temperature and centigrade. I don't know how. I don't know how to get in there and switch the temperature to be Fahrenheit on the main. Although more and more stuff for us is centigrade. So it would make sense that centigrade is the main temperature and the subset is in the tiny print. It's going to be in Fahrenheit. I'm sure that there's going to be a way to change that. Yeah, it's I'll have to figure that out some other time. But uh, anyway, temperature is super easy to get into and to figure out. The probe is coiled. I dig that. And they had the probe stored inside the cable, which you got to kind of stretch it out to use it. I'm not going to set it that way. Um, so it does come with a temperature probe. Let's take a look at the multimeter probes. Now, here's where you're going to find some of the biggest differences between all your different meters is in the quality of your probes. Those almost feel like silicone jacketed cables. There's no way. Because the nicer meters have silicone jacketed cables. The cheaper ones have PVC. And the, the worst part with the PVC is that they have memory. And, and in other words, when the cable's bent up like this, and when you go to straighten out the PVC cables, they, they want to keep their bend. But look at this. That, that is, it's a real soft durometer. It feels like a silicone or a silicone composite. Definitely feels like a silicone. Um, Another feature that is pretty rare on some meters is uh, a good strain relief right here because this is where a lot of cables break is where it, the rigid part meets the soft part. And if you see, these probes are up at an offset angle, which is nice. That's really nice. Uh, instead of coming off at a standard 90 degree like a lot of them are, these guys here have an offset angle and they have a really nice strain relief. That's really cool. Insertion is really firm. That's another thing is the banana plugs on so many different meters, they feel like they're cheap. They feel like they go in horribly. These ones here go in really nice. I'm extremely happy with this meter thus far. Um, the probes, those definitely feel like silicone. That's crazy. I mean, look at this. As, this is not rigid plastic, by the way. It's, it's, um, it's over molded clearly, but if you look in the strain relief on the probe built in, you see that? How crazy that these are really nice probes. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely taken aback on this because I, I was not prepared for this. That's interesting. Extremely sharp probe points, but look at those probes. Those guys are pointy. Definitely sharp probes. I see why they come with these tip protectors and that completely makes sense because these guys right here would uh, definitely poke the hell out of you. Um, they're very sharp. So anyway, what I might do is to make these even more insulated because these are extremely long is I might cut the tip off of this probe cover. So the little point is sticking out. That makes it an insulated tip and probably they leave it to your option if you want to do that on purpose. But I would maybe cut the very tip off so I'm not, you know, exposing like an inch long probe tip. But these guys are extremely sharp, which is really nice if you have to break through insulation. Like if you have to poke through uh, wiring insulation. Most multimeter probes are very dull and they're, they're horrible for that. These ones are nice and sharp. You can get in next to those connectors like Molex connectors. A lot of those connectors on a lot of main boards, do I have any here? A lot of those main boards, um, the, the connectors are really tiny. So a, a normal multimeter, you almost have to break the connector to kind of get in there and get a good contact patch. These ones, these are nice probes. I'll give them this. Um, this multimeter so far has definitely impressed me. Rigid plastic on the front, and it's got a little indent and a finger stop, and it says they're Cat 3 rated, 1,000 volt max, 10 amp, and the red one says 20 amp. That's particular. Would I be testing a thousand volts with these? Not a chance in hell. <laughs> Not at all. Um, if I'm if I'm going up that high, 
I'm going to use my Fluke with the uh, special probes for 1000 volt. They're longer than these and um, definitely. Uh, maybe for 240 volt, absolutely fine. Um, 480 volt on up, no way, not a chance in hell. So anyway, that's the probes, super nice. And these guys, because these guys have a knurled end, it makes it really nice to unplug them. And you need that because as you heard the little sound when I pulled them off, there's actually some really good contact there on that banana plug. Those are good, good probes. Dig it. All right, let's get into the oscilloscope probe. Let's check this bad boy out. What comes in the pack? All right, so oscilloscope probe, same thing. Uh, this one feels maybe more like a PVC. Again, a long strain relief on this guy. Super long strain relief. I dig that. Definitely a beefy BNC connector, so you can get in there and connect it nice and easily. Not so easy, <laughs> not so easy. Uh, the the over molding of this guy is maybe a little bit sharp. Definitely feels a little sharp. And getting it in there to to put a lot of pressure on that BNC to get it to connect that that was a little bit of a chore there, folks. Let's change the mode back over to the oscilloscope. All right. Now, the first thing you can do to any multimeter to check it out is to hook it up and see what square wave it kicks out and see how calibrated it is. Volume time, move, trigger, DC. So triggering um, is super easy. The button is right here, right, right in the, your function. That's super nice. Uh, switching your coupling is super easy. That's nice. Move. So, yep, now I can move my trigger up and down my cursor so I can measure the waveform. So, volume and time. If I press volume and time, now I assume I'm probably using the arrows. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty intuitive. Volume and time back and forth. If you've used uh, oscilloscopes before, that's going to be a no-brainer. Let's see. Trigger mode uh, auto. I'm on coupling AC probe. It says 1x or 10x. And let's see. Let's measure over. Auto off. Calibrate. Okay. All right. So that was, that was pretty interesting. I put it on calibrate. And um, it says that it's auto calibrating right there. I've got a little brief overview of the waveform up at the, the very, very tippy top. And then down here, I have the full waveform. And man, this guy is flying. You can see it, it says calibrate fail. Why did my calibration fail? Anyway. Let's uh, proceed. Trigger, coupling, menu. Okay. Okay, so for the auto, the auto took a little bit longer than I'm used to on some of my other oscilloscopes, but here you go. It looks like it's perfectly fine. So now what we are going to do is we're going to calibrate and make sure that the square wave is as square as possible. There we go. There we are. So one of the first things that you should do if your oscilloscope has a calibration port, which some of them don't, <laughs> is you, you calibrate your probe so that the probe is matched to your multimeter. Now it's good to go. And uh, I can put my little calibration screwdriver. You, you guys seen how I did that, right? Uh, there's a little port right here on your BNC connector. And while it's showing your square wave, you just go through and adjust it so that it makes a perfect square. Um, I have some other traditional um, 
probe tip covers and stuff in here. Pretty typical oscilloscope stuff. Okay. So now this guy should be good to go. Let's see. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is usually you can just pop these guys off. There you go. Yeah. Wow, that just pulled apart <laughs> kind of viciously. All right. So here we have uh, my oscilloscope probe. There's my pinpoint. And it just fits on. Wow. I didn't want to break it, but it pulled off kind of rough. Pop back on effortlessly, though. There we go. Nice spring tension on that guy. And um, for my reference line, pretty good. Yep. Typical oscilloscope stuff. So let's go ahead and let's see how, how accurate this guy really is. Now, I just checked the square wave, um, but that's only to its own reference. So let's see how this guy does. See, I love how fast it is to switch that stuff over. And it remembered the last setting that I was on. Do you guys see that? Instead of going all the way back to voltage, uh, of course, I didn't shut the meter off, but switching between the two modes, between oscilloscope mode and switching back to um, multimeter mode, it was on temperature, which is, I actually kind of like that. Because if I'm doing a stream of, let's say, refrigerators, freezers, or something like that, if I have to flip through menus every single time to get back to the setting that I was on, that would annoy me. Now, I bet you when I shut this guy off and turn it back on, it will reset. But as long as the meter's on, I like it to stay in the exact setting that I previously had it on. So here we go. Let's set it on ohms. Now this is a, a 10 ohm load right here. Let's pop these tips off. Now mind you, there might be a little bit of oxidation on here. So if you see me moving these probes around this because I'm making sure I get the best possible connection. Okay, so it looks like it's sitting at about 10.25 ohms. Hmm. Now this is a 10 ohm plus or minus 1%. So technically it should be 10.1. Uh, I bet you it is my leads though. Yeah, it is. You see as I get down into it, the ohms gets lower. That is probably my fault because this guy here, it is just sitting out in an open environment and there's clearly some oxidation on there. Um, but for ohms, it's sitting dead on. All right, let's see how easy it is for volts. Pop over. Functions are real quick. Man, I think that this is going to be my new favorite multimeter. Okay, there's one in one side. There's one in the other side. So oh, it showed red, showing that it's got critical voltage. And um, it's actually got a min-max right on the screen. So it's got a frequency and it's got min-max on the same exact screen. So I can see that the maximum voltage that my outlet is sitting at is 117 volts. Um, minimum is zero volts. I can probably reset that. Again, I haven't gone through the meter uh, menu or anything, but uh, that's kind of cool. Very fast response time too, guys. Very fast. See that? Wow. Okay. Let's power it off. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's switch the mode. Let's go back to temperature. Let's go ahead and test something. All right. So right now, um, I have it in degrees centigrade. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it off, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3. Let's turn it back on, and let's see if it goes back into oscilloscope mode. Yep, it does. Okay, so here we are. It's back in oscilloscope mode. It's live. It's, it's ready to go. Wow, these, these really do pull out pretty heartily. All right, guys, let's go ahead and shut this guy off, and let's take it apart. Let's see what's... What it looks like on the inside. On the outside, this guy is very impressive.
I like its feature set. I like its menus. I like the probes that come with it. They're beautiful. They're much higher quality than what I was expecting. And the best part is, if I remember right, I only spent like 70 or $80 on this, this meter. 70 or $80. How crazy is that? Let's go ahead and take it apart. And let's take a look at how it's built. Definitely has exceeded my expectations. Now it's not the fastest multimeter uh, slash oscilloscope in the in the world. In fact, it's it's actually kind of slow. It only, it only I think this one only goes up to ten megahertz. But um, ten megahertz, that's that's more than most of us. We're not we're not doing like microprocessors or anything. And if you're doing high speed bus work, you you probably shouldn't be using this guy. But for most of the stuff we do, like if you're checking out a PWM on a motor, if you're checking out a charge controller or something like that, this is probably the meter that I would suggest. All right. Well, this rubber over molding is holding it together quite well. <laughs> quite well. Come on. It wants to. I know it does. It feels like something is still spring loaded holding it together. Oh, okay. Wow. That guy is definitely held in well. Nice. Nice. Yes. Guys, I can't tell you how much I like when they, they use replaceable batteries. Instead of a lithium ion battery pack, it's got an 18650 cell in here. And it says it's a 2000 milliamp hour. You can get, if you, if you want maybe a better brand cell, you can get a Panasonic cell, a Samsung cell. You can get some better cells and put in here. But 2000 um, milliamp hour, that's, that's actually pretty good. We've got uh, some isolation here on the circuit board, I can see. And it's got a, too many fuses. So you got one mini fuse here, one here. Now that uh, 1000 volt rating, certainly not, definitely not. Um, it says 600 volt cat four or 1000 volt cat three. That's what it says. And it's 10 amp fused or 250 volt maxed. And on the milliamp, it's 250 volt max at 200 milliamp fused. So, there you go guys um we've got a current resistor right here we've got uh, a fuse right there for the milliamp let's see no this is the this is the fuse for the milliamp this right here is the fuse for the amp and it goes through this large current resistor right here uh let's see it's got ribbon cables that go to the front panel and the soldering on the ports Looks really nice, really nice guys. So starting at the top right here, your terminals. This guy here, I feel like it could be put on better. Maybe it would do this guy some, some justice, to, uh, although it's very stable. I'm, I'm pushing that pretty hard. It, it seems like it's very stable. Um, maybe some adhesive or something around this guy would make it a little more stable, but it's, it's not moving even a little bit for me. You can tell that they have, you can see up here, that they have the ability to have a second port. So to, I would imagine that they might have a two channel version of this meter. Um, although one channel seems to be absolutely fine for me. So as I said before, this one right here is for amps. And it, the amps goes through this current resistor right here. And this one right here is for milliamps. See this guy? And this is the brain of the whole thing right here. Pretty simple meter, all surface mount, all the soldering looks really good. Everything looks really nice in there. I was looking for wonky solder jobs, you know, components put on crooked. Yeah, let's see these ports right here. These are your calibration ports. They look nice. USB port looks pretty good. 
USB-C. This guy, if it ever does break, at least it's nice and accessible, so can easily change that guy out. Huh. All right. Well, guys, you can, you can see some of the isolation. Uh, let's see, one of them is going to be right along this plane. The other one is definitely right here on this plane. You can see across this component and across the board, there's uh, an isolation plane. So, guys, it is a pretty nice looking meter. It's, it's more than I expected. You know, I, I don't buy a product intending on trashing it. However, when you're talking uh, $70, $80 here, let's see, how much did I spend on this guy? Just to be specific. I mean, I got this guy off Amazon. I will leave a link in the video description down below so that you can check it out because so far, this meter has been perfect. It's been absolutely perfect. $89 is what I spent on it. Less than 100 bucks for an oscilloscope meter that is not janky. And the other thing I've noticed, those screws are captive. Like even when I jerked it apart, like those fasteners did not fall out. They didn't fall out. So it's got captive screws as well. Look at the mold. That's why this feels so rigid in the hand. Look at all those um, supports that are built into the mold. Incredible, guys. What an amazing deal. So guys, go ahead and check it out in the video description down below. I have uh, the link so that you can get one of these meters. It's absolutely fantastic. And I would say that this guy could be my primary for my tool bag because it's got all the functions that I would really want. And it fits in this little kit right here, nice and neat. And that's what I really want. Um, I'm gonna be probably getting a new tool bag soon because my tool bag is absolutely jam packed. But one of the things I find myself constantly needing is an oscilloscope when I'm, I'm testing motors and stuff. And come to find out that this guy really does check all the boxes. Kind of surprised about that one. And it fits in the palm of your hand. It's like one of the smallest functional scope meters that I've ever seen in my entire career. Very cool. All right, guys. That's the X East XE uh, 702S scope meter. What a deal. Check it out. Thanks for watching, guys.